Hi, this is Tim Davis with BitClass, and today I'd like to show you how BitClass can secure your Office 365 web applications. Of course, BitClass can do much more for securing Office 365, from scanning data at rest via API for data leaks or for malware, to blocking legacy, insecure, Outlook, and client-based applications, and even controlling modern client-based applications, for example, blocking uh, unmanaged devices like tablets or iPhones from using the OneDrive Thick client to sync files. We can also act as an ActiveSync proxy and secure your ActiveSync connections, but that's covered in another video. This video is focusing on the web-based applications accessed within Office 365, which would include browser-based usage of Outlook Online, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Yammer. As with all BitGlass policies, they may be applied by any combination of user or group, device used for access, and location. Now let's look at some of the data loss prevention policies we'll be testing later in this demo. For download DLP, we select the data pattern against which we will match, an action if matched, and to add a watermark to the file. A watermark can be visible or invisible when the file is accessed and may contain a callback to the BitGlass portal for forensic purposes. For this demo, we will scan on download for files containing malware or valid US Social Security numbers and block if found. For files with credit card numbers, we will encrypt and add a visible callback. If a W2 is downloaded, we will force read-only access with an invisible callback. Finally, we will allow the expense report with visible callback watermark inserted. For upload DLP, we will look for files containing information related to cybersecurity and block them. For each of these upload and download rules, we will send notifications to the user and to the administrator about the violation. Now let's look at some of these policies in action. We will sign into Office 365 by going to the main Office webpage. After putting in a username, Office 365 redirects us to the single sign-on provider, which is BitGlass in this demo, but could be any IDP such as Ping, Okta, ADFS, etc. After signing is complete, we land on the default Office 365 applications page. But notice the URL bar. The traffic is passing through the BitGlass reverse proxy, though the page looks the same and no different or additional steps were taken by the user to get here. So now let's look in OneDrive at some files. I will open a file in Word Online that contains some validly formatted but fake US Social Security numbers. I can view and edit the file online. When I select download, the file download does complete, but upon opening the download file, it will contain only a block message, which matches the block action that we configured in our policy. This is the default block message, but it can be customized if desired. Now let's open this file that contains fake but properly formatted credit card numbers. Again, I can view or edit the file within Word Online, but when I attempt to download, notice that the download will become a .zip archive. If I uncompress this archive and view the contents, two files will be present. The encrypted Word document that is now going to be password protected, as we'd expect per our DOP policy to configure encryption, and a text file with the instructions on how to obtain the password for this file. Now let's test an example of making a file read-only on download. A use case for this might be an employee's sensitive data downloaded from an HR app, pay stubs, W-2s, 401k statements, etc. With this mock-up of a W-2 file, we can open and edit within Excel Online as we would expect, but when we download the file, notice that the extension on the download changes to HTML. When we open this downloaded file, we get this browser window where we are prompted for valid credentials. If we cannot provide a valid username and password that is currently active, we cannot view the information in the file. When the credentials are provided, the file content is opened in the read-only viewer where the information cannot be selected, copied, or printed. The session has a built-in and configurable timeout after which the user must re-authenticate to see the data again. Next, let's look at an example of watermarking a file on download. As we saw in our policy creation, watermarks can be visible or invisible within the file and if the file type supports it, may contain a callback to BitGlass each time the file is opened. If we open our downloaded expense report file, we will see at the end a visible watermark that tells us the date and time of original download, the user who downloaded it, the IP address, and a unique transaction ID that enables the file to be identified if to BitGlass if it calls back. Moving on to the case of malware, let's see what happens when a file that matches a malware scan is downloaded from Office 365. BitGlass could also scan OneDrive for malware, but in this instance we are only scanning on download. If we open our benign malware file, we see that it contains the types of information we might normally expect in a Word document, but this file is designed to trigger the Silence malware engine. Opening this file after download, we see the block message for malware, 
which again is fully customizable, and the malware file was not downloaded to our device. We've covered each action that BitGlass can take on download, but let's also test our upload DLP policy action. If you recall, we have a policy that looks for keywords related to cybersecurity within a file and will block those files on upload. So let's try to upload a file containing the word hacker to see if it is blocked on upload as we would expect. Opening the file in Word Online, we will see a block message and a visible watermark added to the file to record its upload metadata. I'll also show you the uploaded file contents so you can see the word hacker does appear and as we expect that that was the trigger for our block. Finally, let's check our email to see if we are seeing the alerts coming in from these DOP policies that we have triggered during our demonstration. If you recall, we had alerts set on each of the policies we've tested in this video. We see several emails have come in already, alerting us to our malware download attempt and to DLP violations. If we open up one of the attached reports, we get detail on the user, application, file, action, pattern that was matched, and date time of the alert. This logging is also present in the BitGlass admin console and can be sent to a logging server or a sim. So that's securing Office 365 web applications using BitGlass. Thank you for watching.